Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to start the first day of the round of 16. Spend new StarCraft to Star League. I am Valdez with me is Moonlight today. How are you doing, buddy? Bun. Moon bun. <laughs> Thank you very much, Velvet Valdez. I'm Sorry. great to be here, man. I'm so happy that I'm wearing a bow tie oh, yeah. and a padded vest. Looking good. I feel fantastic. Gotta go like this to I get it on screen. I'm gonna like, touch that a little oh, yeah. bit. It feels great. I think mine's a bit more padded than yours there. Is it? Let me touch you. Oh, no, it's kind of the same, actually. Really? Actually, I think mine is kind of more padded, to no, be honest. man. I think that's actually what's going on here. Moonlight Whatever. Just jealous. Whatever. Sorry, bro. <laughs> anyway, today starts the round of 16 of the Spanish Star League. And, yep. man, is we got the hell of a first match, a hell of a first group. Like, this is actually one of the most stacked groups, I think, in this tournament yeah. and, and ever in the universe as well. Pretty much. Uh, it kind of reminds me of last season round of eight. You know, like one of these groups where you're like, what? How is this even possible? Uh, Stats Biel Maru Zest is the group, if you did not know about that. And it's going to be a pretty fiery one here tonight. Literally, I think any two of these players can get out of this group. Uh, uh, man, it's, it's heating up here already. I can feel the heat as I wear this uniform in oh, the yeah. middle of summer, in one of the hottest days we have here in Korea. Yeah, absolutely valid. Hey man, I, I got the black one, you know, like I'm <laughs> absorbing the sunlight from that sun we got up there, yeah, actually. Our own personal sun, <laughs> I gotta say, it's pretty bright. But uh, oh. we are going to be starting things off with Stats versus Bial. Uh, it's going to be an amazing PVZ. I'm hoping Bial c is coming into this pretty prepared. It is, oh, yeah. it is one of the biggest individual leagues in the world, though by far one of the hardest. Yeah. There's only one other that can rival that, and there's a GSL. But, um, For sure. It, it's getting to the... the the nitty gritty right here, you know. It's getting to the round of 16. It's getting to this time where you you have to really start turning it on. We're out of challenge now. Yep. No more easy games. No more walkovers. Everyone's here to win. This is the real deal now, Moonglade. And the first match we're going to have here is Stats versus Biel. You can see, as I said before, I think out of all these four, you know, I said pretty much anyone can get out of the group, but I think Biel, uh, considering how he's not playing at his highest level these days, Yeah, uh, to be totally frank. So out of the four, I would actually put him at the lowest. And that's so funny to say about Biel. It's so funny and kind of sad, but it, it makes perfect sense. He just he has not had much luck in tournaments recently. Uh, he's, he's still, he defeated Shine three years to make it this far. But I mean, besides that, he got through it by Doc recently. He barely beat Pig Baby, of all people. He lost his last Pro League match to life. Um, yeah, he, has, he, he certainly hasn't been showing any sort of uh, solid ZVP in quite some time. You can even look at GSL recently in the Grand Finals. He lost the Rain 4-1. Yeah. And it was a pretty big beat down as well. Rain going aggressive, just shutting him down. But anyway, guys, we're going to jump straight into game number one here on Tactic Valley between Stats and Bill. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. That was sick. Sick intros being laid here for round of 16. It's pretty insane. Uh, but up here in the top right in the red, our Protoss player from KT Rolster, it is Stats. There he is. Wearing his pin. The Waldo toss. <laughs> <laughs> Down here in the bottom right, we do have the only Zerg player in the group and one of the few in the tournament. It is Biol. The spine crawler? I don't know what that the is. Spine crawler. <laughs> spine crawler is that, man. <laughs> no, I, something about, uh, I, I read actually all the different, um, you know, the reasons why they get these pins. And I, I kind of forget the one for PL, to be honest. Let's just go with what fish, I said. Fish cake bar. Fish cake, fish cake Doug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like no relation at all. It's just like... <laughs> Yeah, okay, sure, fish cakes are... We just give it that, it's fine. Fish cake spine crawlers are... Oh, we're seeing actually a cannon Protoss potentially. He's going to be scouting Ooh. to the south. Y'all sees it there. Y'all should know something might be a little fishy here. He's, He's going to go for that hatch first. And Stats ending out a very early scout here. He wants to get those cannons down. Yeah, that's a double scout. And I've we're going to see Bjalt sending out a bunch of drones just now. 
He should be safe against this, but we'll see how much Stats commits to it. We're seeing a lot of this these days where the Protoss comes out with a Forge, but doesn't commit too hard to it after a pylon. Yeah. We'll see, though, how much he wants to commit. I think once he sees Biel pull down this many drones, he probably shouldn't commit. Yeah. It really depends on positioning as well. And yeah, from here, you pretty much just let it finish or oh, cancel it and just go for that Nexus. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, you know, we, we don't really see this work anymore, to be honest. You know, it's usually just you send out that one probe, maybe you build a pylon to force off some drones, but I'm kind of surprised that stats goes for the double scout. Yeah. It, almost show, it tells me, like, oh, he really wanted to get some cannons down, but... Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Maybe he was, like, hoping that that overlord wouldn't spot the probe on the way down, or maybe he was, like, if it was going to be, like, a double hatchful pool, maybe he can get, like, some sick cannoning off. But uh, not the case. It's going to be that hatch first in the pool. And I guess it does do some economic damage because you have to f pull four drones. So the mining's going to be a little bit less. Uh, certainly worth the 100 mineral investment. But I'm yeah. not sure if it w is worth it if you double scout like that. Now, I'm, I'm thinking about this map here for Biol. Even looking at these positions, not the best, to be honest. If Stats wants to go ahead and go aggressive on this map, which I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Um, you know, Cactus Valley can be pretty brutal. There's like three choke points right outside your natural Yeah. as the Zerg. Yeah, it is a pretty rough map for Zerg if they want to be aggressive. Not unheard of. I see some fans in the audience. He's not watching. She doesn't care. Who are you texting? Yeah. Well, down goes the third. As expected from a forge opening here and this is a pretty, it's a pretty fair map to start things off on. It's a nice juicy macro game to get them warmed up. But um, yeah, it is hard for Zerg. And these positions are not too bad either for stats. Yeah. I'm just kind of wondering, you know, we only get to play three maps total. So I think they both get two bands. You know what I mean? Yeah. Out of seven maps, you get two bands each, you have four left, or rather three left. But uh, to be honest, I, I didn't see them batting out. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I'll uh, I'll get the info on that, maybe during the break. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, my point is, <laughs> you making you making false promises right now, brother. <laughs> my point is, is that you know I'm kind of surprised that y'all lets this through, this map, uh, just because well, we have seen from I mean, time to time this can be pretty Protoss favored. Sure, but compared to the other maps, uh, there are some pretty wonka doodle maps out there. If I was to use that word. Um, you can you can use that if you want. Me, <laughs> I give you permission. Thank you, Bella. <laughs> there is a uh, you know it, it also comes down to preference what they want. Um, start things off there. You know, cactus, is, I th I think Cactus is going to get through in a lot of these times, a lot of these best uh, matchups. Stargate is going to be the next choice. Well, the opening choice for stats here, and you know. Oracle, we've gone through this a hundred times, Valdez. It's going to help you out yeah. getting that third base. It's also going to potentially do some damage, but not always guaranteed. Uh, the Overlord down south is going to spot it in just uh, an instant the moment it comes out. Unless yeah. he maneuvers it. He's yeah. also got one up there in the north mm. uh, trying to get that angle. And it will actually fly right over there, but I think it will be a little bit too late. Yeah, and already three safety spores are coming up. It's like he, he, he's not taking any chances here in game one one. It's going to help out against DTs as well if that will ever come out in the map. Yeah. I like this kind of play. Just playing very safe uh, to start things off. As you said, just journeying up as hard as possible. I think he made like two or four lings, and that was about it uh, for the army units here for the Zerg. Yeah. Two lings. He is so greedy right now. 59 drones already. He ain't slowing down. He sees the Oracle. He knows what's going on. Oracle taking a bunch of damage down to already 85 health. Gonna have to move away, possibly get some of those shields back. But yeah, I mean, a spore and a queen at each base is gonna be pretty good for defending at least one oracle coming in. Yeah, you're not gonna find your way in there. Certainly not at all. More sentries coming in. He's just uh, planning to be defensive, maybe do the this sort of sentry push out, you know, start to be aggressive just a little bit. All that third goes down. Not commit to too much and always have that recall available. But look how fast this hydrogen's coming up. We see some very early hydras in a fourth base as well. He could be just going into you know the standard sort of roach hydra, possibly viper timing. We do see that infestation pit come down soon. Did he even get a roach horn? I don't think he did. Yeah, it's just straight up hydras here. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You're allowed to do that, man. You're in a great place to do a hydra timing. That's for sure. Yeah. 
And looking at the army of the Protoss right now, just one Zealot, eight sentries, and an Oracle. Uh, he's going to have to delay here for a while. Yeah, that's for sure. So many Hydras coming out. 14 in the build queue right now. Plus that Groove Spines and plus one ranged. He's looking good to do something. Something pretty aggressive. He definitely is. Already moving out on the map. I don't think even Stance has any idea about this. He's got one Oracle back here, starting to do a bit oh. of damage. Found a little spot. But uh, at the same time, I don't, I don't think he saw those Hydras coming across the map. And he's going to have to have those sentries in a very good position because... I don't know, this is going to be interesting. Those Hydras can definitely shell at the front of the natural. Oh, yeah. And look at this. Two more, two more uh, cannons going down in the natural for stats. But, you know, if he goes for that, that forge, you know, get rid of the plus two, that's going to really help out in the very near future. And he's going to do just that and start picking it apart. Yeah, look at this. I don't think Stats can even fight against this. He has to let that forge go, and there it goes. The, the Zerglings do get by, though, getting a pretty decent surround on all of those sentries up there in the third base. Oh, man. He actually did so much damage to those sentries. Two of them went down. One of them is out of energy already. You just you also have to be so careful not to get his army cut up from the forces when he goes down that ramp or if he goes into the natural. Yeah, that's the big thing. You know, he took out two of those sentries, but there's still so many left over. He's got nine in total. A lot of energy on those guys. I'm really curious to see how Stats is going to be able to engage into this, though. Yeah. He needs to have the oh. perfect force fields. Yeah, he lost another sentry there. He's just waiting for more warp to happen. More and more links coming across the map to help out, but are they going to get to there in time? You don't see Stats committing just yet, and I think that's a mistake because here come the links. Once the links come by, it's going to be pretty brutal here for the Protoss player. And here they come. Really nice force fields, though. Only a bunch of the links get by. Still, the Hydra is not doing damage, but uh, the Nexus is going to go down. Down it goes. The damage has been done. Yelp can rest easy now. He can retreat. He doesn't have to commit any more here. He's making 19 more Hydras, getting plus two attack, oh, and man. that speed is just about to finish. And Hive is just about to finish, so he's going to have Vipers soon. You know, I was talking about how this map was pretty good for Protoss, but I, I guess because they, these guys are pretty close, like the Hydras can get over there decently fast. Yeah. And Stats, with the build he went for with the Oracles, he's not really going to have, you know, that much stuff to defend at this third base. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it was a maximum level breed sort of build from Biel as well. You know, he, he simply, he skipped to the Roach Warren, skipped making any army until he made, started building Hydras. That was when he began his... his his army production, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah. He fully droned out uh, on three bases before he had to, to do anything. And this is a, it's like a huge thing to, to go into the mid game with and go for timing like this. Yeah. And look at the army that Protoss. He's got a ton of gateways and he still is on two bases. He's trying to remake that third, but it's going to be a while. Bill very comfortably on four bases, 76 drones. Just sitting back as long as he can sit up here on the top of the ramp, get a nice concave. I think he'll be totally fine. Yeah, he is, it's going to be pretty hard for Stats to do anything from here. At the same time, though, it's going to be hard for Biel to try and make his way down the ramp and, and be aggressive again. Oh. A lot of force fields there and a big Stalker Warp in as well. Yep. He's got a ton of gateways, uh, upwards of like eight or nine at this point. He's trying oh. to go for the surrounds here from many different angles. Those ramps are pretty big. And if Biel can get down them, he's going to have this huge space over here on the right side of the map to really have a great fight against that Protoss army. Yeah, oh, going for the Viper now. Oh, he gets it too. Not even a single bit of a, no, not even a single blinding cloud used there. Yeah. Kind of a mistake. He's got one extra Viper back here, but uh, not, joining the, not joining the fight just yet. Yeah, I think he's going to have to wait for that before he wants to try and make a move. Now Immortals are being added to the army. Storm on the way as well. Y'all have to make the damage uh, happen or maybe even just drop the hammer and kill him before Storm is out because then he's going to have the perfect army against Rogue Hydra. Oh, Biel is going to try to push in here. He's got a ton of units, but he just can't push it through the force field. Still a lot of sentries remain, five of them. He's got like at least two more force fields walls on one of these ramps. Let's see how Stats wants to do this. He tries to get the force fields up, but a, oh, lot, of there you go. a lot of these Zerg uh, units get by. Yeah, he, he, he didn't get enough force fields out. There was a little way into the, you know, the mineral line of that third base. Down the third goes. Look at this concave, absolutely overwhelming as Biel. <laughs> Yep. Also, the Blinding Cloud hit about half the army. Oh, yeah. And uh, GG, that's going to be it. Biel's going to take game number one against Stats. What a powerful stop for Biel. He is looking fantastic today. Yeah. He really had his build thought out. He knew what he had to do. He found that timing. And that Stats was Cactus Valley, man. Too. Yeah, it's probably pretty, pretty surprised that actually went down the way. Yeah.
he's like talking to himself. He's like, what happened there? Like, what was that? I saw him mouthing those words. And, uh, he, I don't know. He, he played very, very standard PBZ. It, it looked okay. Like, usually the Zerg isn't going to be that aggressive with that many Heisers oh, at that timing. Man. So I think he just wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I think so. He was like, he didn't expect y'all to be that greedy and get away with it. And now it's Iron Fortress. Oh, boy. A horrible map for Protoss. I don't know how this one got through amongst uh, the other ones, I gotta say. It's gonna be a very hard match for stats. Yeah, it definitely uh, will be. Third base on this map is so far away from the natural. It's so hard to